All right, traders, welcome to today's webinar event. I want to thank each and every one of you for your attendance. We're going to start talking about um, a pretty hot topic that's going around right now with regards to our community and also um, our trading room at the moment with regards to uh, frequency ratios. And today's webinar topic is going to be specifically around eight math ratios that produce really, really, really big trades. Now, essentially what we're doing with the ratios and the discussions for today's event is we're going to be talking about automated Fibonacci ratios and essentially how we use them, how we find trades, how we look for opportunities and, and why, they're, why they're, they're so efficient lately and, and what they're doing. And uh, a couple things I like to talk about first before we get started. Uh, first and foremost, um, we are recording the event. So we will send you a recording uh, once the event is ready and we will send it out via email. We'll also put it up on our social media channels. And uh, if you can't stay throughout the entire webinar, not to worry, uh, we'll make sure that you get all the information sent to you via email since you've registered to be here. Also, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to type them in the chat box. Um, what I normally recommend doing right now is if you want, you can turn the opportunity for you to text the entire chat room. So in here, there's an option for you to turn, um, when you send a, a response in the chat, it says you can choose all panelists and attendees. Just check all panelists and attendees so that way uh, when you do reply in here, you ask a question, uh, other traders can hear it, they can read it, they can see it. And it also just helps other traders. Uh, a lot of times one great question can help a lot of people. So if you have any questions and I don't get to the answer right away, please note that I'm not, uh, I'm not ignoring you. I am simply just staying on topic and I will get to them eventually once we get through some of the discussions at hand. Okay, so I want to thank each and every one of you for your attendance. As always, you guys are busy people and with everything that's going on today, especially the FOMC announcement this afternoon. I'm not sure if anybody traded pre or post report, um, but we do need to cover a disclaimer before we go into our topics. So give yourself a moment to uh, associate yourself with the risk disclaimer and then we'll get started. Great guys, thanks for letting us put that up there. We always have to put that in there, it's required by law. So we got a jam pack event here guys because I got a lot of stuff I wanna talk about. And uh, if I mute the mic, I'm just battling a little bit, a little bit of a, a, a harsh throat or a hoarse throat. So I got some water here and I'll do my best uh, not to cough on the mic. So I appreciate your guys' understanding on that. Uh, just uh, the benefits of always being on the mic and talking <laughs> all day, every day. So. I want to talk a little bit about who I am and, and, and what qualifies me to be here. For those of you that are new and, and essentially just joining us, we're going to go over the, uh, the overview of what the frequencies is and what it's designed to do and, and why we were here talking about it. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, what your main desires are, some of the setbacks that you may be experiencing, and then the solutions that we can, we can provide with regards to uh, today's event. And then we're going to shift into breaking down different aspects of how we use frequency analysis for trading. Global asset scanning, we're going to be looking at multi-time frame analysis, uh, talk about math-based automation. Um, we're going to talk about the difference between continuation and reversal ratios and the difference between potential and confirmed trades and how we automate the finding of these opportunities because essentially um, the goal is to exploit really big trading opportunities. Now, I... <laughs> You know, I'll just be the first to say it. I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt a little bit this morning. I missed a really, really huge short on the S&P. Software called it textbook. It's just I wasn't able to get in the market <laughs> soon enough. So for those of you in the morning that, that got that trade, uh, kudos. Um, and there was definitely some other ones as well. But uh, we'll, we'll go over some examples. I had We sent an email out and we asked some of our students to send their trades. Um, we had some traders submit some of their trades uh, using the software to kind of show you uh, the opportunities that they've been taking, and uh, we're going to go into that as well. At the end of the event, if you like what we've done here, we're going to provide you with some discounted pricing. Uh, we always provide a discount normally during a webinar that will give you the opportunity to uh, to take advantage of that. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll, we'll go over that at the end of the webinar. Okay. So before I go into any further details, is anybody in here new joining us for the very first time? You've never been to a webinar with us before. This is your first uh, first event live with us. Just type a yes if you're new and this is the first event you've ever joined with us.
Langford says, yes, <laughs> I know Langford's <laughs> just joking. Uh, he, he's been to many of our events, but uh, nonetheless, looks like some of you guys have been here before. I got Adam, I got Anthony, Bill, Bob, Bob, CB, Daniel, Daniel, Dennis. Hey, Dennis, Edward, Gary, Jeff, lots of you guys here. Giselle, hey, Giselle. Um, so just kind of give you a little bit about who I am. My name is Sean Kozak. I'm the founder of Neural Street, and uh, I'm here to do one thing, one thing only, to help you become a better trader. Um, what qualifies me to do that? Uh, well, essentially, I've got just under a decade of trading experience, worked with thousands of traders. I've built about 30 products on multiple trading platforms as a system architect and software engineer. I don't code, but I design all the systems and the software and our developers build it. And um, I'm a trader. You know, I've been, running, I've been running trade rooms for years. I love it. It's a passion of mine. I personally can't see myself ever doing anything different, <laughs> maybe becoming a professional bodybuilder some days if I can get off the ice cream, but <laughs> that's another story. And uh, I just, just love what I do, love teaching traders, love working with people in the industry. And uh, the reason why I'm here is because, you know, we're here to solve some problems. Traders have a lot of problems. And the reality is, is that there's many different problems and it just depends on how you look at each of them and how we can fix them. And so the way we do that is we have tool sets that we help you uh, define how you trade, different systems, different indicators, different software applications. The name of the game though is you have to get good at it, right? It's a skill-based business. So we can provide you with some great tools, but we still need to make sure that you understand how to use them and how to become a great trader using them, right? So if you have any questions throughout the event or you want to speak to me personally, uh, you can shoot me an email and uh, be more than happy to uh, go over any details with you. Um, we also have a lot of traders that will definitely step up and say, you know, what they think and we know their experience with us. So we have an open door policy here at the school. Uh, we're just an email away. So if at the end of the event, you need to get in touch with us, please feel free to do so. All right, guys. So that being said, when, when I talk to traders, I always, I always try to lead with this just to make sure that you're thinking the same way I'm thinking, <laughs> right? Because as a, as a financial professional, we all have the same desire, or at least we pretty much should, right? I mean, if we're all on the same journey, I'd like to think that it's a very similar path, right? Um, I'm assuming just type a yes in the chat box if you want better trading results, you want to believe in the trades that you're taking, okay? You want to know your trades in advance. You want to be able to see your trades be clean and easy so that you can ultimately, you know, have better trade setups. And last but not least, you want to be able to depend on the revenue that you make as a trader. Can you guys give me a yes that all five of them are important? Like, I would really argue that, that anybody would think differently. I, I, I personally know that those five things drive me every single day, right? Why? Because I know that I can always do better as a trader. Everybody can, okay? I know that belief is the number one thing that people struggle with because there's so much room for opportunity to fail, right? Like there's so much failure in this industry and, and it, it doesn't have to be, like traders don't have to fail, but if we're not careful, we will, right? Realistically, trading is a really difficult business when you don't know what you're doing. Once you know what you're doing and you have the right tools and the right uh, resources, it's different, right? And that's why I think belief is so hard to come by because a lot of traders never know what they're doing in advance. A lot of times they, they have a hard time seeing the trades before it happens or even what they're looking for. And how can anyone depend on a revenue stream if that's the problem, right? So the desire is definitely clear, okay? So what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about this because the reality is you're in one position and we want to bring you to the other, okay? How many of you guys are breaking even? You're overwhelmed right now? Maybe questioning if you can actually get this? Frustrated, right? How many of you guys are in the left-hand side of this chart, right? Like, like, give me a yes if you feel you're on the left-hand side right now, right? If, if you feel that whatever's going on in your business, 
you're over here right now. Okay, yellow is a little bit hard to see, so let's just do this. Let me just kind of chalk it up. How many of you guys feel you're over here right now? And there's no shame, no shame, right? Like I, I, had a, I had a meeting with Ashley earlier, and we were talking about how everybody normally has to go through serious struggle before they overcome to greatness. And I think that's the journey of life, really. I don't mean to sound like a philosopher or anything, but the reality is that trading is a great example. You ever see somebody go through a huge fitness journey where they, you know, they lose a whole bunch of weight and they take health and wellness seriously? That's a really big transition, right? Trading is like that, right? A lot of times traders will break even, you know, they get frustrated. They don't believe in their system, sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? This is the reality. A lot of traders get frustrated. I get frustrated sometimes. Heck, this morning I got really frustrated. I missed great trades. The trades that I missed hit the targets and the trades that I took got stopped out. Murphy's Law. But here's the cool part. I trade well consistently over the long game, so I don't get stuck to one day, right? Where a lot of traders, they stay in those stuck environments for a very, very long period of time, okay? So what I'm here to do today, and I truly believe this because I'm gonna show you user examples, that after today's event, okay, what I'm here today to show you, okay, is I'm here to show you how to have an easy strategy. So what's nice about some of the things that I'm going to teach you today is it could be used as standalone or in conjunction, okay? For those of you that are in here, I know some of you already have the frequencies tool sets that we're trading with, but how many of you guys just type a yes in the chat box that you find them easy and simple. You can see them clean. Super, super simple, super easy. <laughs> no question about it, Jerry says, right? Anybody else agree with Jerry? Just do me a favor in the chat box, choose all panelists and attendees so that when you comment, everybody can see your reply. I wanna make sure that when people are commenting and asking questions, people can, uh, okay, can do that, okay? So, a couple things I want to talk about is changing the belief. Okay. The only way I truly believe the only way that anybody will believe that huge success is possible is if they see it in front of them. Okay. It's one of the reasons why I trade in the trading room. I don't just say, Hey guys, you catch that trade. No, the reason I trade in the trading room is so that traders can actually see that success is possible, okay? Now, one of the things that I like is, is I like to have trust. And, and what trust and belief, so I'm just gonna put a little star here, okay? I'm gonna put a little star besides this one here. And I wanna, I just wanna, put a little arrow to that word right there. Okay. Cause I like to, I like to talk about things that are really true to my heart as a financial trader. I need to believe that I can catch big trades so that I don't fear taking them. Okay. I also need to be able to trust in those trades. And what that will do for me is it will give me the ability to depend on repeating it. So there, you know, we all have a great day from time to time, but can you depend on a system and a strategy and a, and a software tool that can produce day in and day out on a regular basis? And that's what I'm here to do today is I'm here to share with you something that I feel does that. And uh, I want to show you examples of it because I think that that's, that's where the real meat and potatoes are, is in the examples, okay? So what I'm gonna do today is I wanna talk about the five biggest solutions that I believe our frequencies trading software provides, okay? It provides automation of easy trade locations. So it's gonna automate opportunity for you. And the reason this is such a huge asset is because it's math driven. So we're gonna be able to see big trades with big target opportunities. And one of the things that I like is that we've built scanners so that you never miss a trade 
or we can hopefully not miss a trade if we could, you know, if we could get there in time. But the advanced scanners allow us to be able to find opportunities. Now, what I want to do today is I want to help you build qualifying factors. So what is a qualifying factor? I think that, you know, software is always going to produce great opportunities, but there's always a way to make it better. Okay. And that's why I like to teach traders how to trade only the best ratios. And that way you can plan all your trades in advance. Now, what's really cool about this is that you can use it as a turnkey system or you can use it as, as a standalone with other systems like we do, okay? I use it in conjunction to our trend and reversal strategies. But we got a lot of traders that just trade this independently, okay? Because it really works. <laughs> so how many of you guys in here think that those five topics could help change your trading. If we were able to help make trading easier, give you bigger trades, help you not miss an opportunity, simplify the trades, and give you pre-built plans in advance. How many of you guys think that those things could help you? Okay. So we're all on the same page. So let me give you an overview of what this looks like. We can trade futures, Forex, or stocks or anything of the nature, as long as it's compatible with our platform, okay? And uh, the reason I think it's, it's, it's fantastic this way is that we're not putting you into a category where you need to trade just one market, okay, right? You can trade whatever you wanna trade, essentially. It's completely universal, completely independent, okay? Because it's all math-driven. It's completely 100% mathematical. Now, what I, what I also think is that not everybody trades time-based charts, right? Sometimes you trade on minute charts. Sometimes you trade on Renko charts, range charts, Hike and Ashy bars, volume bars, you know, whatever the, the case may be, it's completely autodynamic. So if you're someone saying, well, I don't know if I trade the same markets as you, Sean. Well, that's perfect. You don't have to worry about it. You say, well, Sean, I don't really trade the same bar types as you. I say, perfect. It's auto-adapting completely user friendly that way, okay? So let's kind of talk about what math is <laughs> because if, you've ever, if you ever think about the difference between um, subjectivity and objectivity, what do you think the problem is with subjectivity? Okay, so I'm just gonna ask you guys this. Subjectivity. I'm left-handed, so bear with me. <laughs> subjectivity. What's the problem with subjectivity? <laughs> you guys tell me. Irving says he could be wrong. Rob says it's baloney, BS. It's emotional. <laughs> Adam says leaves you wide open for, for, for human error, right? Well, subjectivity is, is the lies we tell ourselves to, uh, to make ourselves feel good. Because a lot of times traders need to be right. They think that being right is about making money. But subjectivity is about pleasing yourself, not pleasing logic. Where objectivity, yeah, exactly. Richard says internal prejudices get in the way of what the chart is telling you. Yes. So objectivity, okay, objectivity probably spelt it wrong, but is facts. Okay, we are dealing with facts, right? We are dealing with A plus B equals C, one plus two equals three, right? <laughs> two plus two equals four, right? A high is a high, a low is a low. A pullback is a pullback, an extension is an extension. Subjectivity is for struggle. Objectivity is for factualization. So the reason I love mathematics so much is because math never lies. Mathematics 
is always going to be an obsolete. It's going to be there. It's never going to change. So when we talk about math-based automation, <laughs> we're automating Fibonacci. Now, Fibonacci is kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why is that? Because so many people are, are aware of it. The reason Fibonacci works so well is because it really adapts well to markets where volume is not available. Right, like sometimes if you were to look at comparing uh, futures versus Forex, you know, Forex traders are very, very technically driven compared to futures traders because of the, the inefficiencies around volume. Now futures has volume, but volume is a nonlinear equation. So there's still a lot of room for subjectivity. <laughs> so one of the things that I love about math is that we can take Fibonacci and we can wrap our heads around the automation around that. Now, what we've done is we've, we've basically built what we consider continuation ratios and reversal ratios. And what these are is these produce different variations of buy ratios or sell ratios. They're pattern recognition. And the reason why pattern recognition is so fantastic is because a pattern is a pattern. It is, it is a math-based visualization, okay? So let me give you some examples of <laughs> the, um, the, 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 the different types of ratios. And, and the reason this is so important, guys, is because mathematics is about measuring the extensions and retracements in Fibonacci. So let me give you a breakdown of uh, continuation ratios, okay? Now, there's other names for this, right? And, and I'll just come out and say, like, there's a lot of traders that will say, well, isn't this uh, harmonics or isn't this um, Fibonacci or isn't this whatever, right? To me, it's ratios because we're using math to measure runs and retracements. There's a lot of terms and those are just jargon, if you will, or sort of speak, I guess you would say those are just human branding, marketing. Okay, <laughs> you strip all that away, what is it? It's math. Okay, so if I want to, if I want to measure, I'm gonna change the color here for a second. If I want to measure this to this, some traders will say, well, that's a pullback. Math traders will say, that's a retracement to the 50%. Who's right or who's wrong? It's the same. So let's just look at it from an objective perspective. Mathematics is about measuring variations of Fibonacci runs and retracements. There is so many different ways to measure them that it's next to impossible for the human eye to do this manually unless... Well, Richard, you know what I mean. 61.8, 23.6, 38.0, you know, 10, 20, half a dozen of the other, right? What I'm trying to get at is it's a visualization of math measurements, right? People will measure the 50%, people will measure the 61.8, the 78.6, the 23.6, 38 point whatever, right? So the point of the matter is, is what we're doing is we're, we're looking for these sequences, okay? We're looking for the sequences based off of measurements. Now, I'll give you an example. There's four different ratios, which means there's two for each, which means there's eight ratios here, okay? Those are continuations. Let's take a look at reversals, okay? The reversals, they're different but yet they're all other variations. So technically, there's eight different ratios, four reversals, four continuations, which makes for 16 trading opportunities, eight longs and eight shorts. Now, let me ask you a question. How many of you guys think that you could manually draw this without messing it up on a regular basis across a lot of different markets? on the fly while trying to trade. Maybe if you're a swing trader and you've got 
a half an hour to draw your levels. Maybe you're an investor and you got a day. Sit around and drink a, a, moit, a Mai Tai and you're making jokes, right? Maybe you're looking at the 240-minute chart and you've got a week to plan your level. What about a day trader that's looking for 20 ticks on a market like the crude oil market? You don't have that time. Okay. So same thing here. Like there's no way you're drawing that. So what we've done is we've built in in-depth scanners so that we can find the opportunities as they're in play. Because the difference is you need to know in advance when an opportunity is happening and then you need to be able to act on it. And I'll give you an example. Today we were, I was looking at a trend trade off the open on the S&P and somebody says, oh, we got a ratio on the S&P too. So I went over and by the time I had an opportunity to, I, I just didn't catch the entry. On a day trading time frame, that's more going to happen. On a swing trading time frame, not so much. Okay, so one of the things we do with the scanners is we've actually just added alerts so that you can be notified. Super, super cool updates, right? And we just really appreciate our users because we had so much positive feedback from the first round when we released this that we just had so many great ideas and we implemented those ideas. And uh, so we're really grateful for all the traders that are trading this right now. Okay, so one of the things that it will do is talk about a potential trade. <laughs> so a potential trade is going to identify the mathematics, okay? And we're gonna create a dialogue box that's gonna tell you the ratio, whether it's a bullish or a bearish ratio, and it's gonna map out the entry, the stops, and the targets, okay? Once a trade hits either the stop or the target, it becomes confirmed. You're either confirmed in a target or you're confirmed on a stop out. So here's an example of a confirmed trade. Okay, hits the entry on projected D, hits the targets. The difference between a confirmed and a potential is the dotted lines in the dialog box versus a confirmed ratio and it's done. Okay, now what I like about this is that the ratio itself is based off of mathematics. So is the trading plan. So you're not sitting there trying to figure out, okay, well, Where's the target? Where's the stop loss? The software uses the ratios mathematically, looks at the measurement of each ratio independently, and therefore the trading plan is auto-adaptive to the size of the ratio. So if you have, let's say, let's say you got a, I'm gonna hope I can draw this right. Let's say you got this bad boy, okay? That's my attempt on that, okay? And then you got the same thing like this. Two different trading opportunities. The trade plan will be here to here, maybe down to here, versus this one will be here to here, maybe down to here. Same, same logistics, it's just, it's a bigger trade because the size of the ratio is bigger, which means the size of the math is auto-adapting. So sometimes you're gonna get smaller trades, sometimes you're gonna get bigger trades. It all depends on the way the market unfolds mathematically, right? There's no subjectivity. It's all based off measurements of measured moves. So here's an example of some really big trades. So this is a great position. This is a, this is a math-based trade. You can see price hit the entry to the tick, ripped up to the target, okay? Here's a short, okay? We'll go in, we'll go take a look at some real charts here in a second. I just wanna, I wanna show you the different variations. Here's a short ratio, here's a long ratio. This one would have been tough. This one didn't quite get down to projected D. So a couple of things you wanna know is that sometimes you'll get the, the entry line here and there'll be this box that'll come around here, which is what we call the buffer zone. I personally like to get in near projected D as much as possible, but I'll miss a few trades from time to time. But I'd rather get a better fill than than uh, than chase price, especially if my distance to target is too far away, is too close. Okay, here's another example of projected D came down hit target. Here's another example of projected T hit it to the tick. Big ratio trade. Okay, these are bigger trades. These are not meant to just be small tickers, guys. We're talking big, big moves here. 
okay? So if you're ever wondering, you're like, hey man, how come I can never catch those big trades? This is a solution to that. You're gonna catch small ones too, but you're gonna catch some big ones on this, okay? And so here's an example, didn't quite get to project a D, but completed the ratio. Here's another example of a really big trade, okay? Here's an example of one came close to the entry. Now here's the thing, depending on how you trade these, there's a buffer zone that'll go around here. You'll see a little highlighted shading. We'll take a look at it on the charts in a second. So that you, you can enter anywhere in here and it's still valid. Okay, super cool to see that. We'll go on, we'll take a look at some live charts. Here's another example of a zigzag ratio, hit projected D. I like these trades, by the way. This was the, the same one that happened today on the S&P just for the short. This trade today happened on the S&P today and it was a big trade. And uh, projected D, hitting targets. Here's another one. This one here came down, projected T, tight stop loss, tight stop on this trade. This is another one here, projected D. Okay, so these are just screenshots of some examples. You can see that none of them really look the same, like they're all different, there's eight different ratios. So you're gonna scan different ratios on many different times. But I wanna talk about some of the users, okay? I wanna talk about some trades I took, and then I wanna talk about some of the trades that some of our customers sent some images in. Uh, I sent an email in uh, earlier this week. I said, hey, if any of you guys took some trades, send in some screenshots of your fills, right? So what I did was I said, okay, so this is a trade I took. I took this trade a little while ago. Uh, great question, Ty. It really depends on the time frame. You're asking too vague of a question, brother. Because we got traders that trade them on one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 240 minutes, 60 minutes. It really depends. You can't gauge that. It's too difficult a question to answer. Because it really depends on you. But I can ask, you can ask the question in the room here. Um, Ty's asking if you could just re-ask your question. Uh, and anybody in here that's trading on them can answer maybe if they've had good success with the ratios. Ty is saying, what is the success rate of the ratios? And uh, anybody in here that's using the software that just wants to share their experience, just type it in the chat box. Okay, so there's a trade I took. Okay, this was a trade in the trading room I took this. Uh, this was a trade that, uh, I another trade I took in the trading room. This was something that, this was an S&P short. Okay, uh, this was a trade that Gary took in the trading room. Uh, you can see his entry there and uh, came up for it. That was a good target, he's a trade room. Uh, here's another example, Terry took this one here. This was an, a, an example, Terry took this trade down on the projected D. You can see that everybody's using slightly different charts. I mean, however you choose to use the software on your charts is different, but these are students in our trade room taking these trades, okay? and so. What I think is good is let's go into some charts and look at some examples. Let's go in and, and take a look at some real examples, okay? <laughs> so what you're seeing here, I wasn't sure if the US Swiss would, would actually hit that target or not, but it did. So let's go talk about that. Okay, this was the last trade that took place on, uh, well, first let's just kind of go through things and explain a few things, okay? Let's go here to the S&P. And uh, man, we had some movement today. We had some movement with the FOMC. Okay, so up here is the uh, drop down menu. Okay, and the whole goal for us is to explain that you've got uh, the ability to show potential trades, confirm trades, all the past ratios, okay, long and shorts. And here's all the different ratios. So you got the four different continuation ratios and the four different reversal ratios. We got the trading plan options in here. And uh, essentially the goal is to just decide, okay, am I going long or am I going short? Which I'm gonna explain in just a moment. But um, if we go back and we take a look at some of these trades, you know, there's a lot of them, okay? There's a lot of different trades. The question becomes, okay, the question becomes, which one should I be taking? This was the S&P short today that I missed the fill on. I missed this trade by a couple ticks. And uh, an unfortunate truth, it was a fantastic short. This is a reversal ratio. One, two, three, pullback, projected D, stop loss here, target here. It ripped down, bigger trades, but it was still a very clean trade, okay? We got another short on the S&P today, came back, boom, boom, boom here, 
take a look here. It came up to projected D. This was still valid based off our system rules too. For those of you that were in the trading room, we were only looking for shorts on the S&P today. And they came up close to stop and they ripped it down and then they dropped it down. You can see here that uh, the FOMC flushed that down. Most traders wouldn't take that going into that Fed announcement, but it did end up hitting target. Now we don't know if it hit target before it came up here or if it came down after, but I can assure you this, I would not want to be sitting through that waiting for the FOMC report. Okay. Let's go here, take a look at, um, let's go take a look at current. We got a potential ratio right now happening on the Euro market. We're going to go to the two minute. All right, this one's looking like it's going on its way to its target. So we'll talk about it. So I'm going to turn the shorts off for a second. We'll talk about this. Turn it off. Okay. There's the long. So let's talk about, this is a really big one. Okay. This is a really, really big trade. So what does this mean? Okay. The ratio started here. You can see the label. Okay. If you want to just turn on the past trades, historicals, let's just turn historicals off for a second. Okay. And uh, turn off, confirmed historical, perfect. Okay, excellent. So you can turn that on. Okay. So let's take a look at where this started. Reversal ratio M3, that's the label. It's a potential because it's dotted. Zigzag came up one, two, massive lift, pullback. Okay, this is one of the ratios. Take a look at the buffer box. You can see this highlighted area. That's where you're allowed to enter these trades. Stop loss down here, target up here. Okay, this is going to turn confirmed. This will disappear and turn to a solid ratio once it hits either the target or the stop, okay? The last three longs on the Euro hit targets, okay? Turn off the shorts. I wanna talk about why we'd be looking at longs versus shorts, okay? We'll talk about that in a second. Let's go take a look at some Forex markets. Let's go see here on uh, the Euro Yen, so I personally wouldn't be looking at going long the Euro Yen, uh, the, or sorry, the US dollar Yen because higher time frames down. We'll talk about that. Let's go to the Euro USD. So this is the same ratio that's happening on the, the Euro futures. So you can see here that the long is coming into the same ratio here, obviously, because the Euro futures tracks the Euro USD, right? So that's, that's, it's the same trade essentially, okay? Let's go in here, take a look at some stocks. You've got XL Energy here. So XL Energy is, uh, and we'll talk about which ones you should be trading versus which ones you shouldn't in just a moment. But let's just take a look. This one's in play. It didn't quite hit the target yet, but the entry was down here and we lifted. Okay. Now I want to talk a little bit about system probability. Okay. Because the answer is not, hey, Sean, you got some really nice fancy software here. Okay. I want to talk about what you need to do now as a trader. Okay. So this is must do as a trader. So let me ask you guys, what do you think you need to do here? <laughs> what do you think is the most important part of any trading system? This is a really important exercise. I like to do this with traders, okay? Okay, so Brad says, okay, I'm gonna write these down. Okay, so we need a proper bias. Okay, so we need to pick a direction, right? <laughs> and then what, do you, what else do you think we need? I'm just testing you guys. I wanna see if you guys are awake. <laughs> I wanna make sure. So we need to have rules around entry and exit, right? Okay. 
only trade best traits. Okay? You say, well, Sean, how do I know what's best versus good versus bad? Okay, so what I've been doing, and this is, I'll just kind of explain um, what I've been doing, because I can only speak from personal experience and, and that of the traders in our community, is I only trade, write this down, guys, this is the golden nugget of the day. Please, if you take anything from this event, take this. We only trade the ratio in the direction of the 30 minute structure. And the next question should be why? And then I say, because it works awesome. <laughs> right? I'll tell you why, another reason why. Okay, because banks and big boys use 30 minute charts for profiles and auctions. <laughs> no, you don't, Bob, not for this. That's just our system. So if you were, if you were not in our trading room, you would not know our turnkey system. Right, this is just frequencies. So make sure you understand that if you want to use the auction bias, it can only help you. But for those of you that are not looking at profiles, and maybe you're not a member of our trading room or anything like that, what do you need to be very successful with this? Bare minimum, you need structure. Higher time frame structure on the 30-minute chart. So what does that mean? Well, that's why I have this here. Okay. So there's going to be opportunities that are going to come in the scanner. Long, short, et cetera, right? So what I do is before I get ready and get excited and start taking trades on my math ratios, what I do is I, I see a scanner. So I'm right now it's saying that I have a trade on the two minute and I have a trade on the three minute chart. Okay. So what I do is I have my scanners linked to these charts here. This is a 30 minute chart. So I know that it's a buy setup. It's a green scanner on a reversal ratio M3 pattern. It's a, it's a green long opportunity. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and I just make sure that my higher time frame structure is up. Now, I like to just look at structure like this. If I'm making higher highs and closing above the highs, which I'm doing right here, okay? If I'm closing above structure, okay? And I have up structure. Now I use other software to tell me that. Not everybody has that. But as long as my structure is up, okay? I will take long trades only. So I will go in here and I will turn shorts off. <laughs> and I will only trade longs. So let me go back and just kind of take a look at the Euro for a second. And let's just kind of map out where these trades took place. So let's just kind of go back here for a second. We were down, 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 and we were up here. So as soon as we came above this level, we switched to up structure. So let's just go back and take a look at these other trades. Right there, we had a, okay. So let's go back and take a look. These long trades. Hmm. So there was a, let's take a look here. It's going into four. That hit the stop. I want to see if we were still above structure here at that time. That never came below. So I think that one kicked the stop. I'm going to put a circle on this one. Just double check. 
Yep. That one kicked the stop here. And then let's go to the next one. This one here had two back-to-back -back ratios. Both of them hit targets. Okay. This one here came down to projected D. Hit both targets. Okay. This one came down to projected D. Hit the first target and did not get quite to the second. Okay. This one back over here is the one we're in now. And it's on its way to the promise line. Okay. So let's go back over here and just take a look at different market. YM, just got that now. Let's take a look at it. Interesting. Okay. YM is showing on the one minute and the two minute. Okay. Let's go here. Let's go to the one minute. Okay, YM on the two minute and the one minute charts. Now, here's the issue. I personally would not take this trade. I would not. I don't care if it hits the target. You want to know why I wouldn't take this trade? Because the sellers are controlling this market. Ever since we closed below structure here, we've been controlled by the shorts. So I only want to look at sellers, not buyers. So even though I've got a long ratio that's working here, I would much rather have my shorts on. Okay, I would much rather have my shorts on, not my longs, because... Uh, I, I just, this market's controlled by sellers right now. So even though, okay, even though I'm getting long ratios, I wouldn't touch it. You say, well, Sean, can I trade whatever I want? The answer is yes. I'm here to offer you suggestions that could potentially increase the efficiency of your expectancy. Maybe you want to take those half size instead of going in with regular position size, okay? Does everybody understand that? Let's go, give me a market. Any market that you want, I will pick it. I will tell you when structure shifted and I will show you a trade without me cherry picking anything. Because it's not about me just calling the ones that I know are right in front of me. Maybe you want to see a market that I'm not even looking at. And don't give me some random things that I've never heard of either, guys. <laughs> I've got a basket of futures. I've got some Forex. Crude oil, Louis says. Okay, let's go to crude oil. Kick crude oil. Give it some time here. Okay, so first and foremost, crude has up structure. Structure was up from here. Okay, so at that yellow line and from here, from that candle to the right, I would only be looking at longs, okay? So let's just type this little text in here. Longs, okay? We'll go, we'll go to the smaller time frame for a second in a moment, okay? So we were down structure, down structure, down structure since here. Right there. Didn't have a lot of room to get to there. So let's just draw a little line in the sand and let's just go in and take a look. So we had down structure here. The reason I like to do this is I like to put proof in the pudding. Okay. So from here up, we were up all the way from right there. So we were up. Let's go back and see. So let's go back and this is great. So we know that from the first section is only ups. Okay. 
only looking at longs from this blue line to the next blue line, okay? Come on, Sean, get together here. There we go. <laughs> First ratio happened here, projected D. Do you see it? I'm going to just put a little circle on the chart. Projected D. Hit the target. T1. See it? That's the first trade. And this happened, I think, earlier yesterday or whatnot. Okay, let's wait for it. Projected D, okay? Hit the target. It's trade two. Hit the second target. This is math. <laughs> this is math, guys. This is not Sean Hay drawing trend lines. This is all Fibonacci math. It has nothing to do with subjectivity. Nothing in this is subjective. This is 100% driven by mathematical algorithms. There is no Sean getting involved here. There is nothing. Okay? Let's wait for the next long ratio. Maybe we won't get it. Maybe we'll get a short. We'll have to wait. Remember, we're waiting for a long. Okay? Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? This one here, look at this. This came to projected D. It didn't touch projected D. Okay, remember there's a buffer zone that goes around these. This was a trade that happened yesterday. There's a buffer zone. This is considered the entry. This is why it's lifting, just so you guys understand this. Okay, this is a valid setup. It just didn't touch the projected D line. Okay, <laughs> and this is coming to 80% of the target. I'm going to say this is break even. We're going to color this as a break even trade. Okay, because Whenever we move 80% to T1, we always go to break even. Okay. Just like that. So that's a break even trade. Okay, so here's another long hit target. Okay, remember we're only looking for longs because the higher time frame structure is up, right? Until the next level of down, until this next line comes in, I'm only looking for longs because that's the way the higher time frame is. Remember we talked about big ratios, small ratios? There's projected D. Wouldn't be trading. That's the overnight. That's midnight. I'm not going to count those because that's trading at midnight on the clock reset. Most traders aren't trading it. It hit targets. I'm not going to count them because it's, I mean, it did hit a target. I mean, you could count it if you want. I, I just don't trade crude oil at that time. Most people don't. There's projected D again, coming in at 1.30. That's the Aussie session. There's target. That's the Asian session. So if you really want to count it, you can. <laughs> it's just a really small trade, really, really tight ticker. Target. Target. Projected D on this one, stop loss. Okay, it came within one tick. I'm going to call it a stop. I'm just going to draw a little line here. Yellow line is a stop loss. Same thing over to the first one. Where's that very, very first one that got kicked out? I think it was down over here, right? So there was two stops. I just like to count them. There's a stop over here. So let's keep going. Now we're looking for shorts. Remember this yellow, this this little, this little, this little line came in here. That's that was long traders territory. <coughs> so Phil, we'll go into that in a second. Good question. So now we're looking for shorts. Okay, over here. So let's go in and turn on shorts. Well, let's, before we do that, let's just count these trades. Let's go back and count how many trades there were. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five wins, two losses. Five wins, two losses. Okay. Now we're going to go over here to the shorts. Turn them on. Because you got shorts through here too, I guarantee it. 
I'm just not touching them. Okay, here's the first short projected D. That 30 minute candle closed at 2.30. Okay, came back, down, down, target. So there's the first trade. Remember, these are math-based, huge trades. These are not small five tickers. Projected D, target. Second trade. Kind of see the theme here, eh, guys? Waiting for the next short. Okay, projected D. Wonder if this is gonna get kicked out here. Stop loss. Let's measure that. That was a stop, because this was the first stop that was down here. So that's a stop loss, projected D, target. So there's a stop and then a target right away. Another one here. Target one, didn't, I uh, hit target two, okay? So we'll just do both targets hit. <laughs> okay, let's wait for it. Now we're going back to longs, and we already did that one. We're, this is the, the yellow line where we said this is where we are today. This was today. So now we're looking for longs here. So let's turn them back on. How many trades is it? That was one, two, three, four, one stop out. So four trades, three wins, one stop. Okay, now we're looking for longs again over here. I'm doing this to build trust. I'm not doing this because I like to hear myself speak, guys. I'm doing this so that you guys can see it first and foremost. We're looking for longs. There wasn't any. There wasn't any today on crude. The retracement didn't give it, which is fine. Right? We can go back and test everything you want, guys. I can assure you this, that uh, that's the fun part of this, is that uh, once you realize what we're doing here, um, let's, let's just be objective, right? So at the beginning, we talked about objective versus subjective. Objective equals 30 minute structure. Can't get, can't get around that. Okay, objective. Math-based ratios. Objective. Plan. Entry, stop, target. There's no subjectivity in anything that we're doing here. Okay, so the whole objective of today's webinar is to do this, okay, is to do this, make your trading easier, give you big trades, okay, and when I mean big trades, I mean big trades, right, because the mathematics produces the big trades, not Sean's opinion of where the market's going, not, hey, did you go to our trade room and did you take a look at how Sean trades? No, I trade the math the same way everybody else trades the math. It's there. I don't, uh, I don't rely on my opinion, okay? It works fantastic on any bar type. Any bar type you want, any bar type, any math, anything you want, because it's, it's using FIB measurements. So it's just gonna be smaller ratios because there's more zigzags, okay? And what's nice is you're not gonna miss trades because you get the scanners to show you when they're happening. Like right now, I can tell you right now, the S&P is giving me a potential trade. Question is, am I allowed to trade it? And the answer is no because I like to look at structure. Give me one second here. This one came up and down. So we're gonna, we're gonna adjust the swing strength on this. So you see how this one flipped up, flipped down? Technically, 
this is a, a zigzag error because of the, the FOMC, that's a, that's a candle close. So this, uh, this could produce an opportunity here. This don't suggest going trading into the close, right? So whether it gives a target trade or not, right? Take a look at, uh, this is why I said on the YM, take a look. We don't trade against the structure. Look at structures down on the YM. What happened on that YM trade? Okay, it hit the target before it hit the stock. Anyways, the point of the matter is, I wouldn't trade the YM trade. I wouldn't touch this one either because it's going against the big picture structure. Right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. Structure is down on the S and P. I ain't touching it. I ain't touching anything long. I'll wait for shorts because it increases the efficiency. It increases my expectancy. Okay. Totally does. So let's kind of talk a little bit about this. Based off what I was explaining, yeah, it's, yeah, Jean, it could work for scalpers. Absolutely. You can use it on small, small. I'm using it on a one minute chart. You want to use it on a six range chart? You can. Five tick range chart, two brick Renko. It's all math ratios, auto adapting. So let me ask you a couple questions. Based off of the rules that I mapped out, okay. Based off these rules here, I'm going to put it over this happy guy because that's the whole point of this. Do you think that the rules that I've given you here, always doing the yellow, that can help you get better results by giving you objective rules to follow? You may yes if you, you, you would agree that this, some of the things that I'm sharing with you can help you achieve the success that you're looking to achieve, okay? What do you think about giving you the belief in the trades? Like the whole purpose of me going back and back testing those things is because it doesn't matter which market you give me. I will go and find you all the trades because the math is there, guys. It cannot lie. There's no, well, maybe we'll take this trend trade. Maybe we'll take this reversal, blah, 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 blah. blah. It's math is math, Okay. We're able to see the trades in advance always because the scanners are doing the work for us. Gene, I'll get into that. Clean and easy trades. Has anybody in here seen those trades be confusing in terms of the entry, the targets? Okay. Those trades to me are crystal clear. They're clean and easy to see because they're mathematical ratios that are using pattern recognition. The only thing that is up for you to do is to trade it so that you can build dependence on what you're doing. Now we're getting some great questions here for those of you that are scalpers, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into this and we're gonna talk about this. Is a one minute chart a scalping time frame? Let me ask you this. Is a one minute chart a scalping time frame? Jerry says yes. Jeff says, yes, Jean, would you say a one minute chart's a scalping time frame? Irving says no, Daniel says no. Okay, what's a scalping time frame? Give me a scalping time frame. Irving says five minutes. Okay, so we're even going down one minute, okay. Gene, why don't you tell me what you think? Dennis says a four tick range bar, okay? So everybody's got different opinions, right? Everybody's, what's, what's right for one person might be different for another. So let me kind of give you an example. I'm gonna, we're gonna templates save as, I'm just gonna use this as frequency web scalp, okay? Let's just grab a bar type. You want range or Renko? You guys tell me. Range or Renko, guys. Range, okay. What brick size? Well, you guys kick, you guys kill me. I want range. I want Renko. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go three. Four tick range bar. It's a bit small on crude oil. Okay, we do six. Okay, we do six. Six ticks. Is that fine, Dennis? Four range. Six tick. 
it's a, it's equivalent to a one minute, right? Try to keep it around one minute, you know, easy, easy peasy, right? So let's go in here and let's just bring this into the frequencies test. Okay. Give it a second to load here, guys. All right. So you can see that they're all different, right? Okay, so if we went back to all those other examples, all we were doing was using a one minute instead of a range bar, okay? Trades are happening pretty close to the same places, no? I mean, yes, okay? You can see how it's auto adapting, okay? Now, the thing about range bars is it depends on the range bar, depends on your bias. So when you ask me why am I using a 30 minute chart for scalping, I'm not using a 30 minute chart for scalping. I'm using a 30 minute chart for directional bias. Okay. I'm using a 30 minute chart to tell me which ratios, which side I want to be trading. I want to know, am I a buyer or am I a seller? If you just pick every single trade, you know, there's no edge to that. You need to pick a bias. That's why I like to stay on the right side to the higher time frame. Okay. So owner says, what's the size of the stop? It's dependent on the ratio. Every stop size is dependent on the ratio. So if I go over to this last ratio trade, look at how the difference between this stop here and this stop here. This one's a little bit bigger than that one. Why? Bigger ratios. So if you're trying to trade a fixed a fix stop size, it's not the way this works. This works based off mathematics. So this projected D to stop and to target is all based off of this ratio. This projected D to stop to target was based off this ratio. Okay. Take a look at this one down here. Look at how tight this stop was. Came right down, boom. Hit the, hit the D, hit the target. Stop was like four ticks. Why? The size of the ratio was itty bitty tidy. Super, super tidy. Look at this one. Massive trade. Massive trade. Let's just take this. Two different ratios here on range bars. This was the RR1. This was the RRM2 M4. This was the entry. Didn't get touched here. This this one was for here. Didn't get touched before I reached the target. Okay, completed. There was a buffer zone there. This one down here is for this. This ratio was a zigzag ratio. One, two, three, four for the ladder and uh, this was the entry that was the target because of the size of this boom 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 we capture the measured moves of these to form Fibonacci math where was the stop on that that's a pretty decent R multiple on that trade okay this is the fun part about it it don't matter what chart you throw at me, guys. I'm going to prove successful. Mathematics doesn't lie. It's a bold statement. Well, this one just rips straight up. Okay. The reason I like minute charts is because they, they work faster. Are these entries or exits comparable? Uh, Jean, great question. Uh, if you're using pivot points, add them on your chart, use them together. I use, we trade these on, uh, on with trends, right? We trade these with trends and reversal levels. Just, it just depends on what you want to use, right? Some traders use them with supply and demand. Some traders use them with other levels. But the big thing for me here is I want to make sure that you understand that, let's just kind of summarize this. One, easy trades. 
Okay, this is important. Number two, clean setups. Okay, like there's no confusion. The entry's there, the stop's there, the target's there, okay? Math equals objective. You cannot, cannot lie around that. There's no, there's no human intuition. There's no, there's no you getting involved. You cannot self-sabotage that. Okay, number four. Okay. Trust and belief come from proof. Okay. And the best way to prove it is to show you that it works, right? Give me a market. Give me a time frame. I will show you that it works. I, I have not been able to fail it. I, no matter how hard I try to, to break it, it, it can't. Like, I haven't been able to break it. I, the only thing that breaks it is trading it on the other side of the, the bigger picture. Like, I try to not, I mean, and even that, I don't have data for the DAX pre. Fortunately not, brother, or I would. Yeah. The reason I'm saying this is because uh, there's a lot of traders that uh, will uh, will trade against my bias. Like there's, there's, you know, Terry or Jerry took a short today on gold. I said, why are you taking that short, Jerry? He says, because it's frequency. I said, because it's against the bias. And it still worked. Like it still hit targets. That's the thing. You can develop your own bias. Maybe you don't want to use the 30 minute and you just want to be taking ratios on the direction of the trend or taking the direction of the auction, whatever your case may be. I just make sure you have a bias. Okay. So what I want to do. Okay. I want to go in for a second and talk a little bit about uh, the inside so that you understand how this works for those of you that are new or you, you have any questions, okay? First and foremost, okay? And that's the wrong one. Okay, for those of you that are still curious and you're, you're interested in what we're doing here, there's a link to the main page. It's got a video on it, explains some of the stuff that we're talking about, okay? For those of you that want to know, okay, well, what is it like when I, when I purchase or I use these tools, right? What happens, okay? Well, what we do is you'll get access to the training, okay? You're going to get access to the templates for the scanners. You're going to get workspaces. There's a user documentation. And there's a detailed training video that goes over the user documentation. Okay. The reason I think this is important is because it's going to explain the ratios in more detail. It's going to explain a few things. Okay. Now, what I did, okay, what I did uh, during the last, uh, when we launched this and we brought this into the community and we had a whole bunch of traders start using it, um, we did a VIP training event. And that VIP training event is, is on how to set up specific you know, scanners and, you know, different settings. And we just went into such a deep, deep, deep dive. Okay. And I think Ashley's put together a promotion that anybody that decides to use the uh, frequency software, we're going to actually hook you up with the, uh, the VIP training. 